When Adam and Eve fell in the Garden of Eden, suddenly they realized they were naked and they felt alone. But Father sent forth His Son to redeem mankind and bring us back to Himself. We don't have to be orphans anymore. Join me for today's important broadcast. Schneider is a voice crying out in our lost world, pointing mankind to Jesus today. Shalom, I'm Cynthia, Rabbi's wife. Beloved, we are so thankful for what God is doing in people's lives through this ministry all around the world. I pray right now that whatever you need in your life, God will minister to you as Rabbi teaches and preaches God's word. God bless you and shalom, beloved ones. My name is Messianic Rabbi K.A. Schneider. Welcome today to this edition of Discovering the Jewish Jesus, where I am in a very special series that we're calling, Who is Father? More than anything else, beloved one, you and I need to know Father God as our own daddy and to understand that we are the children of his own loins. You know what John the Apostle said in the book of 1 John chapter 3, verse 1? He said this, Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us that we should be called the children of God. I encourage you to get this entire series because I've covered so much profound, simple truth that will set you free. I don't want anybody to miss this because knowing God as Father is the aim to which the gospel destinies us to and it's the reason that the Father sent Jesus to us. Many of us, as I've been sharing, have made it all about Jesus and in so doing we've missed the mark. Because even though Jesus is God and we worship Jesus as God, the end is not Jesus, but Jesus came to bring us into relationship with the Father. Don't misunderstand me. We're in relationship with our Messiah Jesus forever. We're going to stand before Him in heaven and cast our crowns at His feet for coming for us, for saving us, for dying for our sins. And there's no way to the Father but through Jesus. But at the end of the day, it's the Father that sent Jesus to us to bring us into relationship with Himself. This is why Paul said in Romans 8.15 that we've received the spirit of adoption by which we now cry out, Abba, Daddy. Abba, Father, God. God wants you and I, beloved one, to know Him as Father. You see, this is the most desperate need that you have. Let's go back historically and kind of put this in perspective. Did you know that the first man, Adam, was actually called a son of God? Adam was called God's son. So we see, for example, in the book of Luke, chapter number 3, verse 38, this statement. Speaking of the genealogy, it says that the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, get it now, the son of God. Adam was literally called God's son. God created Adam, get it now, in his own image so that God could relate to Adam as a father and a son. Just like we sometimes have children. When I say sometimes, I'm just saying for those of us that have children. And our children are in our own likeness. And we can relate to our children as moms and dads. So too God created Adam in his own image that he could relate to Adam as a son. And so Adam is called the son of God. But what happened? Lucifer, Satan, was in the garden lurking, right? And Satan had already been cast out of heaven. Why was Satan cast out of heaven? Listen to me, because Satan didn't want a father. Satan didn't want God to be his father. Satan wanted to be independent. He wanted to be like God. And so we see, for example, in the book of Isaiah and in the book of Ezekiel, we see here a description of who Satan is and, and what he was like. So, for example, in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 13 and 14, we read this. The Lord here, prophetically referring to the devil, he said this. But you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. And I will sit on the mount of assembly in the recesses of the north. 
And of course, north means up. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will make myself like the most high. And so what was in Satan's heart? He said, I will ascend above the heights and I will make myself like the most high God. In Ezekiel chapter 28, we find an even more elaborate description of what was in Satan's heart and what caused him to be cast out of heaven down to the earth. Listen, again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Ezekiel 28, Son of man, take up a lamentation over the king of Tyre and say to him, this was a prophetic person that represented a greater prophetic reality. A greater, he was a symbol of a great prophetic reality. Thus says the Lord God, you had the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The ruby, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the lapis, the lazuli, the turquoise, the emerald, the gold, and the workmanship of your settings and sockets was in you. On the day that you were created, they were prepared. You were the anointed cherub who covers, and I placed you there. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked in the midst of the stones of fire. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created until unrighteousness was found in you. By the abundance of your trade, you were eternally filled with violence and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you out as profane from the mountain of God. And I have destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Your heart was lifted up. Here we go now. Pride. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom by reason of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I put you out before kings that they may see you. And so what happened? This one whom pride arose in, Satan, Lucifer, he wanted to become like God. He wanted to rise above God. He wanted no father in his life anymore. He wanted to be the end of all things. He was cast out. He was cast to the earth. And what did he seduce Adam with? Who was called, we just saw, The Son of God, Adam in Luke 3.38 was called the Son of God. What did Satan seduce Adam with? He said, if you eat from this tree, right, in the book of Genesis, chapter 3, Lucifer said to Satan, if you eat from this tree, you will become like God. Isn't that exactly what Satan said in heaven, which caused him to be cast out? So we see now that same spirit that's in Satan that resulted in him being cast out of heaven, we now see him tempting Adam, who was called God's son, with that same spirit. And when Adam fell for it through the deception of his wife Eve, right, it all started out with the devil who tempted Eve and said to Eve, if you eat from it, you're going to become like God. Then Eve seduced Adam. And then when they ate from it, what happened? Separation took place. Immediately they realized they were naked and they lost, beloved, get it now, a sense of sonship. This is very important. Because mankind, humankind, was created created originally to walk in sonship with God. And again, when I say sonship, I'm speaking of both daughters and sons. To know God as Father. The book of Corinthians chapter 6 tells us, God says, come to me and I'll receive you as sons and daughters. So we were created to be the daughters and the sons of God. But when Adam sinned, the sense of sonship was lost. So the Father sent Jesus to restore us to that original relationship where we could know God as God. I want to just take a step back again. I want to show you this in the book of Genesis, chapter number 3. Once again, Adam is called in Luke 3, 38, the Son of God. But then in Genesis, chapter 3, verse 1 through 10, let's just go back historically, because I want you to see this is solid, grounded, Bible, foundational doctrine today. I don't want you just to feel this. I want you to actually see it rooted in the Word. Let's see what happened with the fall of men. Genesis 3, 1 through 10. Now the serpent, and by the way, the book of Revelation speaks of the devil, and it says the serpent of old. So here we go, the last book in the Bible, the book of Revelation, which was revealed to John through Jesus' angel, calls the devil in the book of Revelation the serpent of old. So when we read Genesis chapter 3, we're reading about the one that Jesus revealed to us is the one that's responsible for all this in the book of Revelation. So here we go, Genesis 3. Now the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field 
which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Indeed, has God said, You shall not eat from any tree of the garden? The woman said to the serpent, From the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat. But from the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat from it or touch it, or you will die. The serpent said to the woman, You surely will not die. For God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be open, and you'll be like God. Now this is exactly what the devil did that caused him to get cast out of heaven. So now here he is, he's taking that same personality that got him cast out of heaven, and he's bringing mankind into it. What happened when the devil took that root? He was cast out of heaven. So then when even Adam ate of the fruit at the devil's seduction, they were then cast from the Father's presence as well. The devil once again said, when you eat from it, your eyes will be open. You'll be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and ate, and she gave also to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves loin coverings. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Think about this. They start out, get it now, as the son and the daughter of the father. They started out, beloved church, knowing God as their father, being blessed in his presence, experiencing intimacy and fellowship with all their needs interiorly being met. And then as soon as they fell for the devil's seduction and ate of the tree, immediately a veil of darkness came over them, separation came over them, and now they realized they were naked because they were no longer father consciousness. They were now flesh conscious because they were separated from the father. They were not conscious of him anymore because that relationship was broken. Now they were only conscious of themselves, and in that state of only being conscious of themselves, fear set in, and so they ran. And so once again, verse 8, they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and get it now, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Beloved, I'm a straight shooter. Secular television is different than Christian television in many ways, but I want to speak to you about this. In secular television, secular networks are able to show the programs that they show through the money that advertisers bring in. However, on Christian networks, programmers like myself, I have to pay for my airtime. I have to pay for the broadcast. So the way that I'm able to broadcast, beloved one, solely is dependent on viewers like you supporting me. Without you, I can't do it. So if you're being blessed by this broadcast, and if you want to partner with Jesus by building His kingdom on the earth, sowing your finances unto the Father through discovering the Jewish Jesus, beloved, is an excellent way to do it. I want you to hear me. The Torah tells us in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14, verse 22 and 23, that if we're going to fear the Lord, we need to honor Him with our finances. So if you're being blessed by this broadcast, if you're not, beloved, sowing your tithe and offerings other places, I want to ask you for your financial help today. I can promise you this. In doing so, you're going to honor the Lord. You're going to be part of building His kingdom. And you're going to be blessed in your life because of your love for Him, which shows by your actions. I love you. God bless you today, my friends. And shalom. Now, back to today's program. The cost of sin, get it now, is that we adopt, get it now, the price for sin is becoming an orphan. The price for sinning is becoming an orphan. Remember, I've been teaching in the previous broadcast that in the ancient biblical world, if there was no father in the home, even if there was a mother, if there was no father, the daughter or son was considered an orphan. So when Adam and Eve sinned, they lost relationship with the father. They were separated. Their spiritual connectivity was broken. 
and now they became conscious only of themselves. They were orphans. But Jesus came and he said to us in John chapter 14, I will not leave you as orphans. And so Jesus' purpose, remember, is to bring us to the Father. Isn't that what Jesus taught? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. And so Jesus said, I'm going to ascend to the Father. I'm going to present myself to him. He's going to receive me as a sacrifice for your sins. And when he receives me as a sacrifice for your sins, he is then going to release to you the Holy Spirit through me that's going to bring you back into relationship with your Abba Daddy God and your orphan sense of life will be gone and you're going to be restored to relationship. Hallelujah. Once again, bless the holy name with Father God. The Lord said in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22, As in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will be made alive. Jesus came, beloved one, to bring you out of that sense of being an orphan that all humankind has experienced since Adam, to bring you back into a relationship, to restore you into relationship, hallelujah, with the Father. Jesus' purpose, beloved, is to reveal the Father to you. Jesus said in John 17, 26, to the Father, His high priestly prayer, He said to the Father, I have made your name known to them and will make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. What name was Yeshua referring to? He was referring to the name Father. You see, the Jewish people already knew God as Yahweh, but they didn't know Him as Father. In fact, when Jesus started calling God Father, the religious Jews of His day wanted to stone Him to death because they couldn't receive that. They thought it was unholy. They thought it was blasphemous. But the reality is this is exactly the type of relationship that Abba Yahweh wants us to have with us. That's why Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5 says, He predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to Himself according to the kind intention of His will. Jesus had been crucified. They put Him in the tomb. We all know Jesus rose from the dead. The, the stone rolled away. And the women, they came to the tomb and they found that he wasn't there. But Jesus appeared, appeared to the woman. And he said, as she saw him, she ran up to grab him. And Jesus said, don't cling to me, he said, for I have not yet ascended, get this now, to my father, hear this now, I have not yet ascended to my God and your God, and hear me now, and to my father and your father. Jesus said to Mary, don't cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my God and your God, and get it now, and my Father and your Father. Do you know that because of Jesus and in Jesus, God is just as much your Father as He is Jesus' Father? Hear what I just said, that in Jesus, you're in Jesus, God chose you in Him. And now that you're in Jesus, Father God is just as much your Father as He is Jesus' Father. Now, don't misunderstand me. I know this is hard to digest, and for some it probably even sounds blasphemous. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Jesus will always be Lord. He's always the only begotten Son. But we've been adopted in Him, and we're now in Christ. This is what Ephesians chapter 1 tells us. God chose us, get it now, in Him. The Father chose us in Jesus. And now that we're in Him... The Father is just as much our Father, in a very real sense of the word, as He is Jesus' Father. This is why Jesus prayed in John 17 that the same love that was in Him, where did the love come from? It came from the Father, that the same love that is in Him, Jesus prayed, would be in us. The Father and Jesus want us to experience the same sense of belonging the same sense of love from the Father that Jesus experiences. Beloved, doesn't this touch your heart? Doesn't this rejuvenate your faith? Don't, don't you rejoice in knowing what your destiny is? That your destiny is to know the Father? When you know that you're born of God's Spirit, and in being born of His Spirit, you become His daughter or His son, 
and that the Father loves you as his own child. Behold what manner of love the Father has given to you, that you are called a child of God, that you're a son or a daughter, and that the same fierce love that the Father loves Jesus with is toward you. When you get a revelation of this and understand where you're going, that you're going into the fullness of this revelation, this experience, beloved, it will change your life. It will free you to run the race. When you get a sense, beloved one, of how loved you are and of your identity by knowing who you are, not the outer man, not how much money you have in the bank, not what car you have or what job you have, not how fat or skinny you are, not how beautiful you are in the flesh. All that is passing away. We all age. All our skin begins to, to, to get old. No, it's not the outer man. It's not the circumstantial things that are passing away. I'm talking about what's inside you. When you realize that the real you is a son or a daughter of God and that God loves you and he's your daddy, when you get a hold of this, beloved one, and I'm telling you, it will bring you into freedom. Father, right now in Yeshua's name, I bless every daughter and every son and every son and every daughter that's under the sound of my voice right now. I ask you, Daddy, reveal your love to each and every son and daughter under the sound of my voice right now. Reveal to them, Daddy, how much you love them and who they are to you, Father, as a son and a daughter in Jesus' name. Paul taught us that the Old Testament was written for us, believers in Jesus today, upon whom the end of the ages has come. What we learn, beloved, from the Old Testament, which was written for our instruction, is that Father God told the children of Israel to bring their tithe into the place that he chose for them. If Father God is using discovering the Jewish Jesus to establish his name, his son, and his kingdom in your life, I want to ask you today, beloved, to make your financial sacrifice to him through discovering the Jewish Jesus. See, the scriptures tell us that we should financially support the ministries that are feeding us. I want to thank you for your financial gift today, and I can promise you this, as you're obedient to the Lord, Father's going to bless you. I love you, and shalom. Here is how you can partner with us. Send your tax-deductible gift to Discovering the Jewish Jesus, P.O. Box 777, Blissfield, Michigan, 49228. To make a credit card donation, call 1-800-777-7835. 1-800-777-7835. To donate securely online, go to discoveringthejewishjesus.com. To show our appreciation, we will send you an audio CD of Rabbi Schneider's Message of the Month, as well as our most recent newsletter. To learn more about this ministry, and for more information about Rabbi Schneider's rich spiritual resources or Messianic music by Joshua James, go to discoveringthejewishjesus.com. If you have a testimony of how the Lord has used Discovering the Jewish Jesus to change your life, we invite you to share it with us. Visit us at discoveringthejewishjesus.com and click on the testimonies link. We are a group of villagers who live in a remote area in Pakistan, and we want to testify that under extreme conditions of persecution on our Christian community, teams of Faith Television Network showed us a message in which Rabbi had taught about passing through a tough time. That message encouraged us to face the sword of death hanging on the head of our Christian community with courage. We want to thank you for all of your messages that you've brought us through Faith Television Network. May God bless you, a sheik from Pakistan. We're glad you joined us today and we want to pray for you. Send us your prayer request by mail or by visiting us at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. We also want to thank you for your prayer support and for your financial support to us. In supporting Discovering the Jewish Jesus, you become a partner with God in building his kingdom. Thank you, and may the Lord pour back into your life as you partner together with us. I'm going to leave my life. I'm going to leave my life for Yeshua. I'm going to leave my life. I'm going to leave my life for Yeshua.
Beloved one, as we close the broadcast today, I want to release Father's blessing on your life. In Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 through 26, the Lord told Moses that when these words are spoken over his people, that he would place his name on them and bless them. Yahweh, Vayishmarech, Ya'er Yahweh p'nave lecha v'chunecha. Yisa Yahweh p'nave lecha v'asem lecha. Shalom. The Lord will bless you and keep you. The Lord will make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord will lift you up with his countenance and the Lord will give you his peace. Maybe you've watched the broadcast today and Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart and you've never invited him into your life before and you'd like to do that right now. Just repeat after me. Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you came and died for my sins and I receive you into my life right now. Thank you for dying for my sins and taking my place on the cross. Come inside and live in me now. Jesus, I give my life to you. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time, let us know. God bless you, beloved ones. I love you and shalom. Coming up next week on Discovering the Jewish Jesus, we're gonna explore what it really means to know God as Father. We all call him Father, but how many of us are really experiencing him? This is gonna be important revelation. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it. Rabbi Schneider has great faith-building resources available for you 24-7. Visit our website to send us your prayer requests. Watch full episodes. Download Rabbi's teaching notes and so much more, all at discoveringthejewishjesus.com.